Well, hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob, and today we're going to go ahead and get uh, back on part two of the uh, garden track or garden trailer build. And I've got the frame setting out here. But before I get started on this, my son, he's been making fun of me because of the, uh, at the end of every one of my videos, I say later. He, he laughs at me every time he hears that. Well, I want to explain what that means. Number one, that's my signature. Number two is Goodbye just sounds so permanent. <laughs> so, later means that you're going to see each other later. Goodbye means goodbye. It's pretty permanent. <laughs> so, uh, two reasons why I do that. So, there you go, Gus. Uh, don't you guys forget to check him out, too. Uh, his name's Gus. And... Uh, he's got a, a gaming channel that he's just starting up. He's getting ready to put up some more videos. And uh, check him out. I'll put a link to it right here in the description. But anyway, uh, let's get back to the trailer. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Alright guys. We're here getting ready to put the wheels on and I had to make a bunch of stuff but um, these shafts need to be greased. If anybody has ever done this, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, or if anybody's ever tried to take one of these shafts out of a wheel that was seized up, unsuccessfully you know why it needs to be greased <laughs> so you want to put grease on this to uh, keep this wheel from seizing to this now I had to make a spacer out of some of this tubing and this is uh, Plex one inch Nipco water pipe and I got tons of it, different sizes. So I made two bushings just to protect this shaft from, you know, the elements. So before we do that, we're just going to take, I just got a little bit of stuff in there, an old wore out brush, and we're just going to brush it. These wheels have a slot. It's got a round hole, but it's got two flat sides on it. The shaft also looks exactly the same way. Well, I need to chase the threads on that one. So, I'll chase the threads on that with a tap, and we'll be back. Alright, so now we've got the wheels on, and in neutral, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to put that pulley on there, or if I'm going to turn that pulley into a some kind of a shaft that comes up and have a plate in the bed so I can add an attachment just to slide it down on there and lock it in place and uh, have me a new attachment. It's an idea. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get this thing off the block or crate.
So now we have a rolling chassis. And the brake's hooked up to it. So we could just run a lever from the brake lever forward out here, put us a slot in here like it is in the dash to where you pull it and it just slides down into a hole. You know, just take and do a slot right here for a rod to come in and you just pull that rod with a T handle and then slide it down into place and your parking brake will be locked. Because there's a hole right in this piece right here where that hooks to. So we can just bring that right through here, straight up into here. And it'll be right beside the tongue. Now, I'm debating on whether to continue mounting the tongue on the top here. Or if maybe I should go ahead and cut a square out here. Just big enough for that tube to slide in and bolt it from underneath because the tractor let me measure that the tractor is eight inches off the ground so with a ball on it that would lift it another two inches so we want to keep this at we want the tractor or the trailer to be level while it's going down the, uh, behind the vehicle so yeah we're probably going to have to mount it underneath I'll tell you why that's a good idea. Yes, it's a little more pain in the ass than I expected or want to do. But you got these raised areas here, and you got it down a valley here, a valley here. Uh, regardless of how I do this, I'm going to have to do some cutting. Uh, I'll probably have to cut this all the way around simply because underneath underneath you have this here little flaps so that needs to be cut out and we want to keep this the outer part because it helps strengthen the frame because of the bends so we want to try to keep as much as that as possible so that it's a good possibility we can just ride the uh, tongue on, on this lip and this lip and that lip and then we'll have to put a washer a thick washer in here or a plate in behind a two inch plate to bolt this to bring it out to the same height as these two because these two are the same height so I'm going to cut these out or cut that piece there out or at least from here around you know I might just be able to take cut that piece there off and use the grinder to grind that down flat so I might use the jigsaw I don't know uh, But that's the idea. We're going to try to put the tongue in here so we can get it down. It's not going to be completely level. Uh, there's really no way to, there's going to be a two inch difference. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll just uh, make a new hitch for the tractor. Here I got you all looking up in the air. <laughs> oh Lord. 
so we want to try to keep this as level as possible and if it is too low in the front we can just make a new hitch for the uh, tractor and bring it up higher so that's no big deal uh, I got a big old piece of 8 inch by 8 inch L channel half inch thick and I'd probably build one because there's no way I would be able to bend that to the right angle without a torch so what's next we're going to paint the uh, tongue and get it ready to put on here and cut this hole out right here and cut this off I might use the jigsaw if it'll go around that turn I don't know if I got a thin enough blade but I'm thinking that maybe it's a good possibility that we can mount that underneath uh, we want our oil hole to be well we may have to um, drill a new oil hole in the front side here uh, basically what I want to do is I want to try to utilize this I don't know how powerful this is but I don't think it's going to have to be too powerful because if I balance my bed good enough that's not going to be perfect but it'll be close but I can make a shaft or a bushing let's just pretend that this is the bushing that goes on there that will interact with this um, I want to try to make it so that it's like that if this thing here will come off which I highly doubt it might it looks like it's got teeth on it but it don't have no clips so that tells me it's pressed on so we might have to take this apart and press this off and put a flat on it and then make an adapter to bolt to bolt to this and then adapt it down to fit this then I will have to do would be make a um, bracket to weld to this that would accept this so we could put a bracket on there that is the same shape as what we need here weld it to it drill holes in their corresponding spots where this mounts and then find some longer screws like that is that the ones no they're straight heads plus I think they're a different thread uh, but I have to find some bolts that are the same size as this but longer to go through the plate and bolt this to it, uh, to it with shims or uh, yeah or not shims but spacers big long spacers sort of like I did the uh, Grizzly GO758 mil when I mounted the motor in I don't know if that'll come off if it doesn't then that means I would have to mount it to the side here somehow but put that in there in case I do need it
I could mount it to the side like that. And no, this is not the one. This is just an idea. I could put that on there. Something like that. And have it so... Because there's a wide spot here between these. I don't know what this is. We may not need it. Uh, this has to do with... Uh, now this is a window crank motor. It's going to have to be taken apart, uh, hopefully. That thing don't look like it comes apart. That's not good. Because if I can't get that apart, I'm not going to be able to use this. Because a window crank motor has a three little plastic that looks like that right there. That keeps this from crushing somebody if they get their hand caught in the window and they'll break up. Uh, this one doesn't come apart though. That's going to suck. So that wouldn't work because once it got a little pressure on it, it would crush those things. But I got other options. I got other motors. This is just to show you an idea of what I'm thinking. See, we could take and do that like that right there gear to gear all right we could do that and mount a plate on here and do the same thing but I don't like this option I like this option better yeah I don't like this motor setting down so I would have to turn it to this way so that this would be parallel to the bed so imagine this underneath there with this mounted just like that So, as you can see, we have this option, and I'd like to try to keep this in the center. And I can take and cut that off. I really don't need to cut it off because it's not really in the way. Might want to mount something to it one day. Uh, but this is the first option, and this is 12 volt, and I can use the existing power I have. All right, guys, here's what I've come up with. I've got a piece of two inch, quarter inch thick L channel, and I took the, two, the four last bolts that holds the frame together out, and I'm gonna drill a hole here and here to reuse the other bolts. All right, and that'll mount right there, and then this rod here is gonna be welded to this piece after I make all the bushings. Now this is going to be the raise. This is what the bed is going to mount to. So uh, I hope this is going to be heavy enough. Uh, it should be. So if not I guess I'm back to the drawing board. But I want to make some bushings like this to go on this shaft once I turn it down and then slide this up on that and then make a nice matching when it's shorter to finish it out on the other side that way I can put grease in it or grease it and then I'll turn the end down on this pipe or solid steel and thread it to put a nut on there and a washer to keep it all together and then this piece will mount, this will be a three piece pivot pin, or pivot for a dump bed. So, 
that's about five foot. So we're going to have about a five foot bed. And we've got about a foot and a half, well, about a foot off the end to put some weight back there. And then the cylinder will go down in here, whatever contour it'll go. Hopefully I don't have to cut out any of this uh, inner frame. Uh, if I do, I'll just have to reinforce it somehow, somewhere else. All right. That will basically do that right there. All right. Then we got to make a bracket that goes on the side here, on inside of each one of these, or on this and bend it so that these here when they come down they rest so basically you got one coming in this way and you got one coming in this way and when that comes down it self centers itself so we're, we got to make those to mount here somewhere probably up here and then I got a stand up front here I'll show you come off of an air compressor Then we've got this that we can mount to the bottom of this and that'll be the stop. Now it's a little downhill so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a rubber pad in between here. That way when it comes down it's a soft landing. So it looks it actually it just Barely, just enough, just the rubber is enough to bring it up to where it's going to be parallel with the trailer. Uh, then I got to cut all this off. Got to cut these off. And um, this, this stuff here. easy enough to screw the boards to so the boards will go crisscross now I have to put a brace in here in the, up here in the front somewhere uh, somewhere to keep it from uh, flexing actually it's not going to flex because we're going to have this front piece in there so the idea is almost there for the dump bed itself. I got to do the dump bed first in order to figure out what I'm going to use to raise the dump. It could be one of different things. So, that's where we're at. So, now I just got to figure out where I'm going to so I have to have all these pieces ready to go before I turn my pin down because I don't know how far this way or that way I need to be with the uh, these beams. So we know that we're going to have the thickness of this bushing and we want this to be about an eighth of an inch. Well actually a little more than that, a quarter inch away from this because I'm pretty sure that this Stuff I'm going to be using is going to be quarter inch. So we want to bring that out to about a quarter inch to allow for the self centering piece. So we want to match it back here. So we want this to be parallel with the edge of this so we know they're straight. 